Hello, hello out there. Hi, lovelies. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Those of you that are already here, uh, deep apologies. I'm running a few minutes behind. I was trying to find things to show you all. I was somewhat successful, but not fully. <laughs> so there's that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to do my little intro here. My name is Kyla Givehan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I have been going for about since 2012. And I am, it's been a while, been kind of away from the channel for a while, not really um, posting, not sharing things. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time inside of my online academy really nurturing the energy there and nurturing folks over in that space. And I unfortunately have been kind of neglecting my new YouTube community. So I thought Kyla 2024, you're going to get yourself in gear and get back over there. So here I am, I'm doing a month of vlogs where I am live stream vlogs where I'm showing up live every single day, different times to share different things. Uh, the topics that I'm talking about are all based on the ABCs of me. Um, I am looking at the things that I love in the world that, that have meaning to me that have been a part of my journey as a creative and as a, a female entrepreneur uh, and just talking about those things and to kind of help wrangle me a little bit because uh, I can go all around and make all kind of curves and all the things um, in order to kind of wrangle me a little bit. I'm using the alphabet to help me. So today we are on letter N day. N as in Nancy. Um, and so I have a few letter N things that we're going to talk about. And I'm glad you're here. So with each session, each live stream, each vlog day, I am also... Um, pulling a card to start us out. And so I was thinking yesterday, I pulled Enjoy from Barb Owens' deck, the um, Mandala Ma Madness deck. And I was thinking, oh, Enjoy, even though it starts with the letter E, it has the sound of an N. So I thought that was an interesting thing to just notice. Um, not really doing anything with it, just noticing that. So today's deck, letter N. Uh, hang on, I'm going to grab the one I'm thinking about. Hold, please. I'll be right back. Hmm. Um, I actually had a deck that I was going to use that I can't find it. So why don't we just use a different one than what I thought I was going to use today. You know what? I know exactly what we're going to do. So today, letter N, we're also... We're also going to be talking about the um, natal chart. I'm going to talk a little bit about the astrological natal chart. So why don't we pull from the Zodiac Tarot today? That feels appropriate considering. Oh, thank you. These scissors. Yeah, you know, listen, <laughs> I just left a message for a friend. I was like, can you please tell me why I have 17 pairs of scissors out? I probably have more like 25 somewhere in this room. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, but I like pretty scissors, right? Like these scissors. Let's just talk about scissors for a moment. We'll come back to it on S day. But listen, I have to say this. These scissors I got from Ikea and I just liked them. I thought, oh, it's a neat sort of, you know, the handle is different than most handles. And it's like, oh, these are, they are the worst scissors ever. They are horrible. <laughs> Like, absolutely horrible. 
but they look nice. They look nice. I like how they look. <laughs> these. I bought these. They're really for pruning in your garden. They suck at paper cutting. <laughs> Just not. But they're nice. They're beautiful to look at. You know what I mean? It's kind of ridiculous. I need to get a handle. I need to get a handle on it, people. Um, so we'll talk more about scissors uh, on S Day because I have so many scissors. And there's a story behind every single one. You know there is. Um, the storyteller in me, there's always a story. There's always a story behind it. So let's pull our card for the day so we can move along. I am determined. I am determined not to be on this live stream for four hours. We were streaming for four hours yesterday. That's crazy pants. Um, I'm talking like crazy pants. Okay. So I don't use this deck very often. So I'm going to break it in a little bit by shuffling. Doing a good shuffling. Um, Damon says the Z on Zodiac can be rotated 90 degrees to get it in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's my husband. <laughs> he sees things that the rest of us don't see. Um, and I love that about him. It's one of his, one of his things that I love, love, love about him. Um, I'm going to shuffle these up a little bit. This is the Zodiac Tarot. It is by, mm -hmm, I'm going to have to find the name of who that's by. I don't, it's, a, it's one of those that comes in a box, inside of a box. So the second box doesn't actually have uh, anything on it. So I'm going to give it a good shuffle here. How are y'all doing today? Those of you that are here live, how you doing? Pop in the chat. Tell me. Tell me how you're feeling. What kind of energy you got going on today? Whenever I am using the deck for the first time, like it's right out of the box or something, I really try to get a good shuffle. For me, shuffling is also how I infuse my energy into the cards. So, um, and also go ahead and put in the chat, are you, are you a person who uses tarot? Hi, Linda. I get to spend time with you twice in one day. That feels darn special. Feels darn special. Hey, glitter girl. All right, that's probably enough shuffling to get us a good smattering to get those cards. Um, those cards doing what they do okay I'm gonna pull one card for me one card for the collective energy of all of us here on the live stream and for those of you watching <laughs> Jesus yes I'm here for the shuffle I love it uh, I love it You know, Rena, you know, the shuffle is, um, thank you for, for even saying that, and happy Sunday to you as well. Um, the shuffle for me is like half the reading, like getting your energy into the cards. Like I take as, I take the time it takes until it feels right to me. Um, hi, Roseanne. All is well here. Hi, Tina. Tina says, I'm feeling kitchen witchery. My friend says it's kitchen witching. <laughs> kitchen witching time. I love that. What you cooking up over there, Miss Tina? Stephanie says, tired rearranging the room to make arty things more accessible. Stephanie, that <laughs> that is the story of my life. I feel like I'm doing that every day. Every day I'm like, how do I get this to all be where I need it to be? One day, y'all, I'm going to have the perfect studio set up. And I'm going to be like, now what? <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> because, listen, I'm so used to making making do in a space that doesn't always feel perfect. What will I do if I ever have what I think is the perfect space? What will I do? Hi, Odelia. Welcome. All right, y'all. Let me get to pulling these cards. Here we go. All right. Card for me. 
card for the collective. And if you're watching on the replay, it's for you too. You don't have to be here live to get some of this good energy. All right. I'm going to, so again, this is the Zodiac Tarot for those of you that are um, new to decks and cards and that kind of thing. Um, welcome to my world. This is a lot of what I do and what I care about and what's important to me. Um, tarot is a study tool, self-discovery tool, in my opinion and in my world and the way that I use it. Um, and it also is how I, I teach using this. I help people in their um, creative journeys and their uh, personal discovery journeys. To really, um, yeah, to just learn who they are on a deeper level using the archetypes of tarot. And then when you bring astrology and tarot together, you make my heart happy. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say. You make my heart happy. So all of that to say, let's pull these cards, turn these cards over and see what we get. Ah, for me, five of pentacles. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, <laughs> the fives can be tricky in, in tarot, but I'm not going to name them just yet. Let me, yeah, I'll, yeah, well, I was going to do both cards, but I'll do one at a time. So first of all, pentacles are earth energy. They are all about um, resources, the body, the physical material world. Um, they are very much about um us looking at our resources on a deeper level and then the fives are very much about change chaos conflict action um they have lots of other things but they are also very much about um i think for me whenever i get a five i'm like okay something's gonna happen here there's going to be a conflict or some chaos that brings about change that requires me to take action. That is exactly what I think about when I get a five. Um, and so typically, so I'll say this uh, without going too much in the weeds. In the traditional writer Wade Smith tarot, which a lot of tarot decks are based on, um, it has a very similar setup where there's like a window, but it's like to a church. And then there's in the right way, Smith, um, there's like two people on the outside of the church. Um, this is a very glossy, shiny deck. I'm noticing that as it reflects back on the screen here. Um, but when this card kind of, you know, shows up traditionally, it's about um, like adversity or. It could also be like dark night of the soul kind of energy. It could be about loneliness or loss even. Um, it can have sort of a an energy that's like, oh, oh. But I tend to read very intuitively as well. So I look at, you know, what's happening in the card, the energy of the card. And the thing about this deck is a lot of the, I'm not going to use the darkness because all these cards are dark. They all have very, you know, they all have a black background. So <coughs> I'm going to take that into account. I'm also going to look at the fact that I've got Mercury, zodiacally, I've got Mercury um, and Taurus sitting up here together. Communication. And sort of stability, grounding, earthiness, because Taurus is an earthy sign as well. So I just take all of that into consideration. So honestly, I'm going to go real intuitive on this and say there's this re there's I started at five o'clock today. Time is something that I consider to be my most precious resource because I cannot I can I know how to make more money. I don't know how to make more time. I know how to make more food. I know how to make more like, like I can make things, but I cannot make time. So time for me is like valuable. If I give I can give you money because I know how to make more money. But if I give you my time, that feels really super valuable to me. It's like me giving you my time is like me saying to you, you matter to me. I care about you because I can't make more time. 
I can't get time back. Like you can't borrow time from me. If I give you time, it's given. You can't necessarily borrow and give back, right? Now you can give me some of your time, but we can't borrow and barter time. Like it's right. So to me, time is so, so I'm going to go with that intuitive. Like we started at five o'clock and also because I value time so much, I value other people's time as well. So I'm going to go real, real intuitive here and say, I need to keep my communication tight today because we started at five o'clock and we're not going to be here till nine o'clock, right? I'm going to honor time. I'm going to honor my time. I'm going to honor your time. So that's where I'm going with that, that this card is reminding me to stay on top of time today. <laughs> um, so that's my plan. I'm looking at, I've been here 15 minutes already. So that's that. All right, for the collective, boom. Oh, we got another pentacle showing up. And I love, love that this is happening. All right, so page of pentacles. And in the in tarot, the pages are the um, sort of novice, newbie kind of energy. Also the messenger energy, right? Giving us messages. Pages are off, we're often back in the, olden days the page would be the one you would give the message to and they would run it across the land to the next person <laughs> right they were they were our internet they were our email system uh so page of pentacles again brings me back to communication to messenger to being um clear and concise this particular page is holding one one pentacle um some people refer to pentacles as coins discs um so but people really look at pentacles as like the thing we value and so again i'm going to bring it to time um and because it's that earth energy i'm going to be real again mindful of of how i'm using this resource but for the collective i'm like okay maybe this is saying hey y'all be help kyla stay stay on track with time <laughs> But also, whenever I see a solo person in a card, I go, OK, this is about the individual, the self. So I will say to all of you that I'm going to say this on a collective level. What I think is happening is honor your time as well. Honor your resources, honor the body. All of that is pentacles energy. All right. So that's what we got for today. Five of pentacles and page of pentacles. Oh, and um, what I will say is traditionally. The page of pentacles is all about um, a person who is kind of like a scholar, but it also represents the introverted folks in, in the world. So, um, like I said, messenger of good fortune or mess messengers for the pages, but be pentacles typically is like a messenger of good fortune or um, <laughs> I can't even believe I missed this part in my mind as I go back. I'm like, oh, yeah, page of pentacles is also about good management management. So I'm going to say this is about us managing our time and our resources. Um, and, and because we are all creatives, I'm going to say our, our resource as creatives, our imagination, our intuition, our art supplies, like how are we managing all of those things? All right. I feel like that's probably enough. That was a pretty extensive reading for us there. <laughs> I'll show a few of the cards because I like to do that for y'all. So the chariot. Um, the chariot is a really big card in my uh, astrological makeup, but also in my um, I teach a concept in uh, PPP called the tarot team. And in my it's like the archetypes that are like with us for a lifetime based on the work of Mary Kay Greer, Angela Ahrens. Uh, and so in this, the, the chariot shows up for me a lot. It's my soul card. It's my personality card. It's my name card. Like it shows up a lot of times for me. So I always look at the chariot card in a deck to decide if I want to buy it. And I really loved this chariot card. So there's that. But here are a few of the cards in this deck. Justice. That one was the Ace of Cups. Knight of Swords. But what I'm really loving about this deck is that it brings in the zodiacal um, associations, which I also think I have to verify this, but I think they also map to the decans. So those of you in PPP who are here right now, this might be an interesting deck for us to do a deck study with. What do you think? You have to tell me what you think. I like the imagery. It's it's simple, but can be read intuitively, I think, really beautifully. 
Um, it's definitely a Rider Waite Smith inspired deck. So lots of good, lots of good imagery here. The Emperor. Nice. I like that one. Oh, strength card. That's a good one. This year, it, as a collective, we are all walking with an eight energy because 2024, if you add up those numbers, you get four, five, six, seven, eight, you get eight strength cards. We're all kind of walking with this energy this year of the strength card. Um, so I love that this, this is the last one I'm going to end on for this deck. But the Zodiac Tarot. I think it's pretty good. I don't, I don't really care so much about how, how, for how shiny they are, but you know, it is what it is. All right, friends. Today we are talking about getting a little strip of paper out here. Today is letter N. Uh-oh. All right, Rena, you were pulling cards. What'd you get over there? Tell us what you got in your card pool. All right, so where's my pen? Okay. Today, letter N. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to talk natal charts just for a moment. I'm not going to do a whole deep dive in it because I told y'all I have a little class coming up and I've got a little printable free, free little, uh, I'm calling it a printable, but like a, a little free worksheet for folks that'll be, um, I'll be sharing with y'all soon, probably this week. Um, so natal charts, numerology. <laughs> I mentioned to, uh, we just got out of a creative catalyst call, um, which is like a, a, a weekly call that I do. It's kind of like a little power hour for creatives. We just come together. We set a timer. We create. We let each other's energy kind of flow into our spaces and give us a little extra boost of, of creative mojo. Uh, if, you, if you're in any of my current paid classes right now, you have access to Creative Catalyst. So I invite you to join us if you can. Um, but in that session just now, I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be talking about numerology. And I said, I'm going to keep it to an hour. I'm going to talk a little bit about natal charts and numerologists. <laughs> and one of our practitioners said, really? You're going to talk about numerology in just like a few minutes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the highlights. I'm going to give you the highlights. Um, needle books. Let's talk needle books. Now, I did have a couple of other things. Um, I don't remember. I should go back and look at what I wrote for today's thing. Uh, does anybody remember? what I wrote as the title for today. Um, I don't have a way to switch here and go look, but I feel like I said needle books. I don't remember. I'm not even going to try to pretend like I remember. I don't. Uh, let's see what else is happening in the chat. Stephanie says, my husband says, I just need less stuff. <laughs> Listen, that's hilarious. Yeah. And when we run out of space, I think instead of having less stuff, we just need bigger house, bigger space, bigger apartments, right? Whatever it is. <laughs> I'm team more stuff. No, I'm not. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to do better, y'all. Uh, Rena says, okay, she was shuffling with us. She got the Empress, which maps to Venus, and the Magician, which maps to Mercury. Also shuffling a Zodiac Tarot deck. Love that. Yes. That Venus energy, what we value, bringing us right back to what we value. Uh, Venus is all about the things we value, the ways in which we bring beauty into the world. Um, and then that Magician, to me, is like the ultimate alchemist. I call myself a life alchemist. My school is called Life Alchemy Academy. I mean, there's there's a lot. Um, and then I got Mercury, too, on the on the five of pentacles. I love the connections. We're, we're in that energy together, Rena. Um, what did I write as the title? OK, thank you. Natal charts, numerology and needle books. Oh, well, OK, maybe that's all we're talking about today. Then <laughs> I will see if more comes up. I mean, I could. I'm not even going to add it, but I'm just going to say I could talk about Neptune. I could talk about the nodes, but I think that will come up. 
Um, and there's a part of me that wanted to put like neurodivergent on there, but I don't know. I'm still seeing how I feel about that label and that term that people are using right now. I feel like, mm, I don't know. So I didn't go there because I'm still sitting with it myself as somebody who I think would technically be labeled that way. Um, I'm thinking about how I feel about it. I get to, I get to think about it. I don't have to just jump on the bandwagon. I can, I can take some time and decide how I feel about it. Um, okay. So let's do, here's a question for you all in the chat. So in the, in the description, when I set up this uh, scheduled live stream, I put some links for you to go download your natal chart. How many of you have a natal chart? Let's start with that. This is an example. It's a black and white version. Um, and this is of a made up person that we use in pull pen paint. I use this made up person to teach from. Okay. She is my teaching person. I use her to show as examples. And all the things. I wonder if I can put a little green behind it, if that'll make a difference. Oh, it really does not like white, y'all. It just gets dark and muddy. I'm going to take it out of the sleeve so it doesn't get too much of a glare. And I want to just, um, okay, okay. Hey, y'all my people. And those of you who don't, you can still be my people too. Um, you're still my people. Um, OK, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a down and dirty. It's not going to be a, a lesson. You're going to have to come back and watch the recording if you're brand new to all of this. Give yourself some grace and space um, and just be in the energy of me talking about these things. So I'm going to keep it real simple here. In fact, hold on. I just, there has to be a way for me to make this lighting not be horrible. I want to see if putting this under this makes a difference at all. Mm, feeling like that might have made it worse. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we're just going to keep moving because every day I'm like, how do I make the lighting better? Okay, that feels better. So we'll go with that. All right, so if you went to astro.com, like I suggested, then your natal chart will likely look like this. I always say for a beginner, I think it's better to start with what is called whole sign. You can see right here, it says web style whole sign. So for your natal chart, your natal chart is an, a snapshot. It's like a photographic, it's like a, 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 a graphical representation of the sky the moment you were born. OK, and so it shows us where all of the planetary bodies, the celestial bodies, um, were in the sky the moment you were born. And that then can give us information about some of the archetypal energies imprinted on you, which then can translate to some of the lessons you're here to learn. It can translate into some of your preferences and your tendencies and potentially into some of the patterns that you already came here with and that potentially you're going to continue to play out over and over and over again in your lifetime. So I know y'all don't really like looking at my tea, uh -uh. <laughs> but not but and having this information, um, we can drill down as well into certain sections of it and see how the energies are playing off of each other. A natal chart, well, astrology in general, the way that I work with it and the way that I teach it and um, prefer to use it with clients and students is that astrology is a language of relationships. So it's your relationship to yourself. It's showing you the relationship you are going to have to the rest of the world. And it's also showing you the relationships of the planets and the zodiacal signs and the planets in relationship to each other. So it is literally a language of relationships. And so we're learning when we look at our charts, we're literally learning who we are in the world, what was imprinted on us energetically. And through learning that, we can also start to have better relationships with the people in our lives 
We can have a better relationship with the world at large. So I'm going to try to keep myself super reined in <laughs> and just do a quick sort of anatomy of what you're looking at. Because the first time I got my astrological chart, I didn't pull it myself. An astrologer, I went to an astrology uh, astrologer and she pulled my chart for me. She was doing an astrological reading for me. And I didn't know anything about astrology other than like I knew what a horoscope was. I knew my sun sign, like what most people know. Um, I was in my 20s. Yeah, I was like 24, maybe 23, 24, somewhere around there. And she pulled my chart and she showed me uh, something that looked similar to this. It was different. It wasn't the same system, but it was it, it looked like this. And what I saw, number one, was math. And I was like, oh, uh, uh, I just see numbers. I see mm -mm, I see a whole bunch of numbers and stuff. What you want me to do with that? I don't want that. No, thank you. That was the first thing I saw was numbers. The second thing I was like, it looks like gobbledygook to me. I don't know what I'm looking at. And she wasn't there. She wasn't trying to explain to me what I was looking at either. She said, here, she did this. Here's your chart and handed it to me. And then she proceeded to tell me things that I thought were very helpful things, but she wasn't making a connection for me. She wasn't saying, here are the things I see in your chart and here's where I see them. What I'm telling you is right here, Kyla. And here's why, like she wasn't doing any of that. She just handed me this and then she proceeded to give me my reading. So I literally walked out of there feeling like, yeah, some of that stuff she said about me, mm -hmm, that's about right. That feels pretty accurate. Also, I have to say that in my 20s, I didn't have my time of birth to give her. So she was pulling it based on me being like, yeah, my mama says she thinks I was born at night. You know, so I didn't have my exact details. So I walked out of her office and I balled this up and threw it in the trash can on the way out. That's because I was feeling kind of like overwhelmed a little bit like she should have done. She should have helped me understand what I was looking at more. So I threw it away. I didn't even look at it. Fast forward some years, blah, blah, blah. Here I am today sitting in front of you um, as a as a professional reader <laughs> of astrology. I am very close to hitting my 200th chart uh, read professionally, which I don't know. I feel pretty excited about that. Um. So I want to just tell you the anatomy of what you're seeing. And that's where I'm going to leave it for today. I'm going to show you once you pull your chart, what you're actually seeing on this thing. OK, so first things first, you're seeing the zodiacal wheel on this outer ring. You're seeing the zodiac signs. They don't change their order, y'all. OK, on this wheel. Aries is always going to be where Aries is and it's always going to be right bef in between Pisces and Taurus. Right now, there is a natural order to the chart. Naturally, Aries always starts in the first house and then everything goes around this way. However, because this is a snapshot of the sky when Tammy was born, Aries wasn't right here when she was born. Aries was here. So for your individual chart, it may look different if you're an Aries rising. And it'll be here. So this outer wheel represents the zodiac signs. If we come in one wheel, now we're seeing the planetary bodies and the celestial beings and the um, luminaries. The sun and the moon are the luminaries. And so we're seeing that. And we're seeing a couple of points on the on the chart as well, like your nodes, um, MC and IC, which don't worry about what that means right now. If you don't know, just be OK with not knowing in this moment. So these are all of the zodiacal signs in here. I'm sorry, not the zodiacal signs, the planets and the celestial bodies. If we come in one more wheel, then we have the houses of astrology represented by these little numbers one through 12. There are 12 houses in this particular um, whole sign system. These are the little pie slices. So this is house one. That's house two, three. And each house has several areas of life that they represent. And so the areas of life that they represent give us, again, it drills down for us information that kind of helps us to know uh, more fully how these energies 
want to play where in our lives they want to play out. OK. So, for instance, um, our first house is all about the self, the physical body. It's our it's the way we navigate the world. This energy expresses itself through these areas of life. Right. And so for Tammy, Tammy sample, our little sample person, she is an Aquarius rising, also known as your ascendant, also known as your AC. And so as an Aquarius rising, the way that she is likely to express herself is through her physical body. Maybe she's a dancer. Maybe she's moving. It's an air sign. So it's, you know, there may be some of that that's happening. Um, maybe she talks with her hands a lot, you know? Um, so there's a lot of ways. I mean, we could go a lot of ways. And I'm saying that because she also has Mercury sitting here. So these little glyphs are all showing us the, the symbols for this outer ring, shows us symbols for the signs. Inner, the next ring in shows us symbols for the planets and luminaries. And then we have these 1 through 12 that shows us show us the houses. All of these lines that are crossing and touching and doing this, these we call aspects. And they show us the relationship between one planet and another um, again, the relationship. So when you first get your chart, the first three things to look at are what is your sun sign? What is your rising sign? And then come down to this little box and look at what your moon sign is. Those three things um, we often refer to some astrologers. We refer to it as the primal triad. OK. If we were to strip you of everything else and leave you with just those three that's who you are at your essence, at your core. So anatomy wise, showing you the rest of what's here. So I've talked about the chart, the wheel and what's up here. This information down below the wheel is all the same information, just presented in a different way. So everything here in this little box is also up here. So, for instance, you see the symbol for sun. And it says 15 degrees Pisces. If I come to Pisces and I see that same sign, the sun and the numbers 15 degrees, um, 31 minutes, blah, blah, blah. So it's just another way to see this same information. This is not different information. It's just presented. Is this information presented in a different way? Over here, all of this little matrix looking thing here, this is a graphical representation of all these lines that are going and crossing. These are the aspects. OK, so it's the same information that you see these lines showing just presented in a different way. And then this chart happens to be black and white. But if you printed it yours in color or you're looking at it in color, then you're going to see um, everything is kind of color coded based on the element. So everything that's a fire sign is going to be colored red. Everything that is an earth sign, I think in this system is green. Everything that is um, water will be blue. And everything that is air, I think, is yellow. And so it is, again, is representing the elements because we have four elements that we work with in astrology. And those elements are shown. Um, the zodiacal signs each have an element associated with them. They also each have a mode in which their energy operates. That information is down here. So when you look at this little box, what you're seeing is fire, air, earth and water represented down this uh, vertical axis and going across horizontally. We see the mode of those energies, cardinal, fixed and mutable. Cardinal is your energy that is like the initiating, you know, starting energy. Fixed is the energy that's kind of like the, the sustainable energy that you can rely on is super reliable. Um, but also can be kind of stuck energy if you're not careful. And then M is mutable. It's the energy that's like, we're just going to go with the flow. Let's do it. Let's shift. Let's move. So one of the first things I like to do is look at a person's chart to show me their overall sort of dominant energy. And for Tammy, she has a lot of air. You can see how many air things she has. And she has a lot of fixed energy. So she is fixed air. Air energy in 
astrology really is coming from like um if we think about it it's it's like the communication it's our thoughts it's our it's our ideas it's um the way we um handle conflict and deal with conflict and communication uh it's intellectual pursuits anything that is like matters of the mind that's our air energy fixed energy is that sustainable but also sometimes hard to move kind of energy doesn't want to move needs a reason to move like why are we changing anything so when you have someone who has fixed air energy oftentimes what you get in a relationship with them is sometimes they don't like to change their mind they don't like it when you change your mind they like to kind of keep the communication a certain way they they could tend to have a very fixed way of thinking fixed beliefs um not really easy to change perspectives right and so when you know that about yourself or about another person it helps you understand how to interact a little bit um, more thoughtfully i think all right that's the anatomy of the chart y'all that's everything now if you're looking at astro.com's chart you're also going to see up here that your sun sign and your ascendant are listed here and then every then they're relisted down here again they give you the information lots of ways so lots of things to just sit with and look at and think about all right that's a down and dirty that's that's as fast as i can do it <laughs> um and how did, how did i do so i started at about 16 17 minutes i'm 40 minutes in ah, ah. we'll just call that a little a mini course, a mini course on understanding the anatomy of your of your natal chart. Um, astrology has been such a fascinating tool for me. It has truly um, helped me navigate life so much better. I mean, I spent so much time in my teens and early 20s being this really stubborn, my way or the highway kind of person. And when I pulled my chart at a moment where I started to learn astrology and was taking classes and really, truly trying to understand it and learn it. Um, I realized that I have double Capricorn energy, meaning my sun and my moon are both Capricorn. Capricorn is a, 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 a earth energy, but it is one. It's also very stubborn energy like it has. It's not fixed, but it, it's a cardinal energy. And so lots of starting. I'm so good at starting y'all. Listen. I can start a thousand things. So the idea that I like I am really working to not say, oh, I don't have to show up again. I'm, I've done 14 days. That's enough because my tendency. And that's what our chart shows us is our tendencies. My tendency is to just start a bunch of things. I mean, come on, I'm literally doing complete your projects for my 100 day project because I have so many projects I have started. Now, that's a combination of being double Capricorn and being a mixed media artist. <laughs> but, but also, I have in me embedded and imprinted a lot of starter energy. Okay. And then I am also a Leo rising. And that Leo rising energy um, or that fire is again, I got the fire to get stuff going. Right. But as a double cap, I have a hard time finishing most cardinal energy dominant cardinal energy has a hard time finishing right so there's a lot that but I, what i learned about myself when i started to learn about astrology is like oh so i am um hardwired to kind of be my way or the highway at that point when you learn that information if you learn something about yourself you get a choice and the choice is keep doing what you've been doing and getting what you've been getting or change something and see what you get differently up to that point i had constantly been at odds with people lots of anger lots of fighting lots of resistance lots of and i was like oh i'm hardwired that way but i also have free will i also have free will i can make a choice so i started going all right what if you learned to, to compromise, cultivate an attitude of compromise. And instead of everything always needing to be my way or the highway, what if I said, here's my way, what's your way? Where do our highways meet and merge? And I have to tell you, 
when I started making a conscious effort to not have to always have things go my way, and this is one example of many things uh, that Capricorn brings to the table. So don't get it twisted. We are more, we're multidimensional. We're complex. We contain multitudes. Um, I'm just using this as one example. But once I started to realize that that was the energy I was walking through the, earth, the world with, navigating the world that way, I was like, oh, I got to do something different. I've got to. And when I did, so many things started opening up for me. I started to soften. The world started to soften in response. So I'm going to leave it at that and just say um, it is one of the absolute best uh, discovery tools that I have encountered. It's not the only, um, but it is definitely one of the best. And what I love about it is it is this is this is ancient knowledge. This isn't like modern science. This is ancient knowledge the and and the and the the ancients who mapped all of this stuff y'all they didn't have computers and internet and ai and <laughs> they were literally sitting outside for days and hours and months and tracking and watching and documenting can you imagine that can you imagine that i'm in awe of it every time i think about it Damon wrote in the chat, astrology is the science of light, light being figuratively knowledge and wisdom. Astrology equals light plus study of the study of light. Well, I love it. All right. So feel free to ask me questions in the chat. I can always bring Tammy's uh, uh, chart back up for us. But I want to move on and talk about. Oh, oh, no. I'm going to keep this over here for a moment and say um, the ancients were mapping it. I, I lost. I stopped my train of thought there. Um, and so there, these energies are also archetypal, right? When you start thinking about some of the planets in here, and then you know anything about uh, mythology, right? We have a planet called Jupiter. We talked about Jupiter on letter J day. So you can go back and listen to me uh, pontificate about that. <laughs> but Jupiter, the Roman god in Greek is Zeus. So everything you think you know about Zeus, map that to Jupiter as well, right? Jupiter and Zeus are essentially the same uh, archetype or God in mythology. And think about it. Zeus was the God of gods, the God of the other gods. Like it's this big energy. Jupiter carries that with it, right? It's the same. So you can start bringing in other areas like map to astrology. I mean, map to mythology, Everything like Venus, you got Venus, everything you know about Venus in mythology translates here onto this. Everything you think you know about Mercury, the messenger of the gods, maps to this Mercury. Mercury, the messenger of the god with the wings on his on his shoes, um, also called Nike in the other uh, wait, is he is he Mercury, Roman, Nike, Greek, I think, right? But that's where we get that like little swoosh from. It's like Mercury was like the God, messenger God. He would zip across the heavens, taking messages from one God to the ne next God and to the from the gods to the humans. And the right, he was the messenger. He was quick moving, fast moving, just like our planet Mercury is. is like it moves fast. It's, fa it's one of the faster moving non-luminary uh, entities up there. So all of what you know about that can be layered here as well. Now, this is not my what I'm about to say next is not my area of expertise, but I, I'm going to nod to my husband um, because there are also people who have looked at how the Bible maps back to astrology. Like the Bible is a lot of there's a whole school of thought out there that says the Bible is basically an astrological manual. OK, so again, that's not my area, but I know that there's a whole study out there. So I'm saying that to say astrology, it doesn't live in a vacuum like it is connected to a lot of things. And so tarot also connects back here, which is why you have things like a zodiac tarot, because they're mapping these archetypal energies together. And that's why when Rena was putting her stuff in the chat, she said, Venus and she put in print or she said Empress and she put in parentheses Venus because those two are mapped together. And, you know, there is like a correspondence. So lots of ways that you can start to bring this stuff into, you know, the, the other things that you already know in the world that you're probably and a lot of this stuff, y'all, it shows up 
in so many things. It shows up in so many things in, in branding and in marketing, the names of companies. Um, it, it permeates in our culture. So it's not just um, and, and the last thing I'm going to say about it, astrology and astronomy. Why every every time I say astronomy, I feel like I'm supposed to say pastrami. Astrology and astronomy used to be one thing. They were not separate. They were not separate. They are separate now. And I feel um, a remerging of them happening in our society right now. I don't know. Maybe that's wishful thinking. But there was a time when they were the same thing. They were not separate. Okay. Um, and that was also a time when going to university meant you were studying about the universe and not just these little compartmentalized. I'm an English professor I'm an, or I'm an English student. I'm a math student, right? You were learning about the universe and how it works. And this is also why we have developed a mystery school is because we feel like some of this stuff feels like a mystery to people. Let's demystify it. All right. Uh, numerology. I'm going to talk about that while I do this next little thing. So hold on. Hmm. I see some of y'all dropping your stuff in the chat. I love it. We got a, we have a Virgo sun with a Capricorn rising. Hello, Cap. Uh, and a Taurus moon. I will say this about the primal triad really quickly. Your sun sign is how you shine your light into the world. And now this is going to be a watered down, super simple, cliff notes, cheat sheet kind of version. OK, your sun sign is how you shine your light into the world. Your moon sign is how you feel. It's your it's your emotional wellness. I mean, it, it maps to a, couple, a bunch of other things. But again, I'm giving you the down and dirty quick hits. OK, um, and then your rising sign is how other people see you when they first meet you. It's how you present to the world. It's your front facing energy to the world. So when somebody doesn't know you and they're meeting you for the first time, what they actually experience is your rising sign, not your sun sign. So I find it so curious that people like to go on dating apps and things and put, you know, I am a sun sign, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, tell me your rising sign. Because that tells me how you navigate the world. It tells me your outlook on the world. It tells me a little bit more about your persona and your personality. Tell me your rising sign. I want to know that. All right. Um, okay. So that's your, that's your little primal triad. And... Um, I have a whole little story analogy that I do when I teach about the primal triad, but I won't go into that because that'll be that'll that will definitely take us over our time. <laughs> so I'm going to go. I'm looking at the time. I said I was going to try to I'm trying to stay under 90 minutes, 90 minutes or less. I told my my folks in the catalyst, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go for about an hour. And then I gave them the list and they were like, mm -mm, no, don't fool yourself. <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Kyla. <laughs> um, really quickly, I wanted to just bring back the book that we made that I made with, you know, live yesterday for four hours. Thank you for those of you that stayed along with me. Oh, I see another one popping in. Hold on. Um, Damon said uni universe uni one plus first song. Yeah. Yeah. Damon gave a breakdown of universe and diverse the other day in one of our sessions um, in the academy. And I was like, yeah, that part, I got to sit with that for a bit. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. Uh, let's see. We have another one here. Aquarius. So um, Scorpio sun, Gemini moon, Aquarius rising. Oh, I'm loving the double air energy in that primal triad. And, you know, I didn't say this, but um, the person who said Virgo, Sun, Capricorn, Rising, Taurus, Moon, that's triple Earth, baby. Talk about someone who's probably super grounded. Right. Even if you didn't walk through the world that way um, in the early part of your life, like I guarantee you, you're probably, you know, and I I'm not saying names because I don't want to just out people. But I know people are going to see the chat anyway. I don't know. I'm being mindful about, you know, because when I do readings and stuff for people, I'm always super mindful about protecting their identity i don't share readings with it right like so so that this, this is just out of habit and integrity um so i'm just gonna say um what i noticed too because i know this person who is this triple earth energy um 
yeah totally grounded told like that energy is exactly what i what i feel when i'm in your presence so wow and then we have the other person who shared who has um scorpio sun so we got water gemini moon air and aquarius rising air so the double air in there so probably someone who's very intellectual likes to pursue intellectual things likes to research and talk about the things they research feels really like um more more confident and grounded when they have enough information to to be in you know to talk about things or to share or to um so that might be the tendency of someone with those energies and because we've got a scorpio sun energy the way you shine in the world is probably very much um by going deep not wide right because scorpio is a kind of energy that likes to go to the depths of things and talk about the hard stuff first let's talk about the hard stuff first right you say good news or bad news to a scorpio they go give me the bad news <laughs> give me the bad news first uh they like to go to those places they're comfortable there they don't mind it doesn't feel hard for them um so yeah okay so i'm done there for that that was fun thank you for letting me do that okay oh oh sorry i have to say one more thing because i don't i feel like i would not be worth my salt as a as an astrologer if i don't say there's also nature and nurture at play the the chart shows you what was imprinted but our parents then get us and raise us and that nurturing can sometimes nurture things out of us or nurture things into us that are not imprinted on us so i tend i actually had a, a mama who didn't know anything about astrology as far as i know um but she raised me like the double Capricorn Leo that I am. She tried her, her best to really get me to lean into that Leo rising. And I resisted it at every possible turn, y'all. But when I look back at my life, my mother was constantly pushing me on stage to go be a leader, to go do this. Speak up, Kyla, go do this. Very Leo rising. So instead of her nurturing it out of me, she was trying, she was nurturing it into me. She also taught me to be extremely independent. And when I say that to her, she's like, I didn't try to teach you to be independent. You came here independent. <laughs> um, yes, my Gemini mama. Um, she was like, I, I didn't raise you to be independent. You came here independent. <laughs> she was like, I had no choice, <laughs> um, which I can only imagine. Double Capricorn, baby. Right. So. But I'm saying that nature nurture part because sometimes we can look at our get our charts and we can go, that doesn't feel like me at all. And you have to ask yourself, has it been nurtured out of you? Right. I watch people who have very strong, airy sun, Aries rising children. And I see them trying to break that spirit out of them, break it, break that ram, button their heads against everything, asking why a thousand times. And I'm like, let them let them let them be that little Aries Ram. That's how they're going to shine in the world, you know? So nature and nurture are really important. There's what the, the imprinting is our, is, is our nature, but the way we get nurtured is how we get conditioned and programmed and how we start living into certain patterns, how we start to establish our belief system, our limiting beliefs about who we are and what we can do. All of that is a part of our nurturing. And so sometimes we get to a place in our lives I'm just going to go ahead and say maybe in our 30s, 40s, 50s, somewhere in there where we we realize we have to now start detangling the nature and the nurture. Because sometimes we weren't always nurtured in a way that helped our nature. You see? So, all right, I'm going to name that. OK, so this was the book we made yesterday. And. Or that I made, I guess I'm saying we as the like you all were here helping me out. And I went through and picked up bits and pieces that were on my table yesterday and just started putting things in. I did some stamping uh, using some some stamps that I had made. Um, some handmade uh, stamps, homemade. I'm going to say homemade, homemade stamps. Um, I did some of that. I had a bunch of gesso paint out. So I just used some gesso and made some little marks on there just to start adding a little bit of texture. Um, I don't know where this book is going or what it's doing. I was cleaning off my brayer, did a stamping, and then, you know, roll, I was in playing. Added a little tab of fabric and used my paint pens to make a little 
symbol on it. This was the same fabric that I used here. You know, I had those little bits left over. I was like, well, I could throw them away or I could make little tabs to go on them. Right. So I like the little tab hanging out like that. Um, did I do two tabs? I feel like I did two tabs, but I don't know. Where the second one went. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I thought about it. Made myself a little pocket because I love pockets. This was the from the jelly plate printing day that, that I did. So all these little bits are from that jelly plate printing. Remember the little texture plates I was using, all of that. So I just started to bring some of those pieces in um, to this uh, little journal here to just start giving it some, some personality, just start infusing a little personality into it. I feel like there was another place I taped some stuff down. So I just wanted to show you all what I had done. Um, I love flipping through a journal and hearing that crackling when the pages are like kind of trying to stick together and kind of peel them apart. I love that sound. Is that weird? It's okay if it is. I'm, I know. I'm weird. I'm okay with it. But, you know, as things start to dry, remember I took the stylus and was scratching in the paint and like I just love seeing those things pop through. This was the piece of paper. I had a piece of paper, put some paint on it and was rolling on it. And then I just tore it out and kept those that little painty bit and popped it in there um, with a glue stick. Um, made another little tab with a piece of the jelly plate printing paper. Just, you know, I like tabs and pockets and things in my in my journal. Again, rolling off the brayer here um, just to bring that in. So I'm really digging this. I, I feel like this is one I could play in for months, probably, um, if not the whole rest of this year. You know, again, just carrying that stamp over and bringing that in. Some little uh, tape that had paint on it that I just stuck in there because I'm like, Psh, why not? Why not? Oh, there's the other tab. I was like, oh, no, I did another tab somewhere. Oh, no, that's the same tab. It's just the other side of it. <laughs> I knew I had done another little, like, series of dots. I'm like, where is that? It's on the other side. <laughs> same tab. I'm a crazy baby some days. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I have so far with this. That's what I've done. But I'm going to keep working in it, and I'll keep reporting back as I play and add things to it. But I really am digging it. I was thinking about whether or not I wanted to do a wrap because I usually do wraps um, on my journals. And I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold deciding on whether or not it gets a wrap on it. Uh, we'll see. But I'm quite happy with how. Like I like to come back and look at things like the next day and go, huh? Okay, what do I like about this? I wrote about it in my little studio notes journal. I it's crazy to me how much I love this technique of blowing with the straw. That I'm like I don't do it enough. I don't do it enough. Um, I really loved that serendipitously I went and just grabbed this to use for the strips. Really digging that. And oddly enough, for those of you who were here watching, I had poked all those holes in the center here. And I was feeling really like, man, I hate that I did that. I should have thought, should have thought, sat down and just really thought about what um, binding I wanted to do before I poked my holes. But when I look back at this, I actually love that I put the, like I love the, how it looks now. Like I love that this is there. I wouldn't have put this piece there if there had been uh, thread. I just wouldn't have. But now I really love it. So I'm happy that I did that. So lean into the the little what we call mistakes or the happy accidents or whatever, um, because sometimes you end up liking that more than you can imagine. So. All right. That was yesterday's book. So today for needle. Oh. I want to show, I'm just trying to show you all sh also the little projects as I complete them. So I did get my, I did go ahead and glue down. Y'all saw me putting the glue on it yesterday. So it's good. It's solid. It's sturdy. Now I just need to figure out how, what I want to do with my closure. So I'll probably have that figured out in the next day or so. I kind of just let things sit until something sort of speaks to me. I could totally do a little um, Velcro here. But I don't know. I'm, I'm not quite sure yet. I'm going to think about it because it's not going to stay closed on its own. Like there's really nothing I could do to make that stay closed on its own unless I did some sort of weighted thing. Now, I could potentially do a magnet here. I do have some magnets I could do. I have to think about that. OK, 
let's talk needle books. Now, I have shown you all. I cannot, for the life of me, find my other needle book. It's driving me bonkers. I'm like, it has to be in the studio somewhere. And I'm a little bit like feeling some kind of way about it because it was the first needle book I ever made. And man, am I going to be disappointed if I can't find that thing. Um, hold on one second. I think I'm going to look one more place. Hold, hold, hold. Well, that was wishful thinking. I was like, oh, maybe it's over in that and it's not. So I don't know. I am going to find it, though. If I have to tear this little studio up, it is in here somewhere. So this is the second needle book that I made. And I shared this with you all before I did a class um, two years ago, maybe with Jody Alexander. And it was really cool. She taught us how to make this little needle book. Um, and I had. And so this one looks a lot neater than my first one. I really wanted to show you all. Um, the first one, um, Damon, thank you. I see your text. Um, I really wanted to show you all the first one because I wanted you to see how wackadoodle wonky it was. OK, um, so that you could know it doesn't need to be perfect. It does not need to be perfect. But it's basically I'm just showing you what it is. And you can probably y'all could probably go to YouTube and Google needlebook. And there's like a thousand videos of people teaching you how to make them. But I thought I'd just talk about it anyway. Um, this is like a, a linen and we just, it's doubled. So we stitched on it. That's why you don't see this stitching on here because we stitched it while it was a single piece. And then we eventually folded, put it together and did a little stitch. And also we were learning different stitches, right? You can see that I've got a running stitch here. I've got a little whip stitch here on this side. Come on. It's not the best whip stitch because I was learning. It's my first time doing a whip stitch and a blanket stitch on this side. So it's meant to, well, this is supposed to be a blanket stitch. I didn't do a good job. I ended up just whip stitching, I think, because I was like, wait, what am I supposed to do with the blanket stitch? <laughs> um, seed stitch, applique, um, again, seed stitch, and... I feel like there's a couple others in here. I keep saying I'm, I call this the suture stitch I, because I can't. I think she might have called. I think that might be the name of it. I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's my favorite. I love it so much. I think it's just beautiful. And then we did a little grid sort of pattern on the back, right? So it's it's pretty. It's a pretty basic sort of concept. It's like take. All the journals you've ever made that are a single pamphlet where you take sign one signature, you fold it in half, you sew down the middle. Right. That's basically what we did. That's all we did. And this is felt. These are little pieces of felt. I can't I'm not even going to tell you how much time I spent looking for felt in this house. Um, today and I found this and I realized, no, this is not the felt I want to use because I think this. I mean, I could use it, but I think it has some sort of it has this texture on it that I think is fusible stuff that you can fuse this to something else. I mean, I could still use it, but I realized after the fact, I don't think that's the thing I really want. So that's the whole thing about a needle book like you can make. And I have this really cute needle book that I got from uh, one of the sacred maker attendees. She makes these really cute needle books and it's completely different from this one. It's not like it's a little more sturdy. It's not as floppy. Um, it has its own uh, sort of sturdiness. In fact, let me see if I can grab that one. Let me grab my, I'm going to grab my sacred makers bag and see if it's in there. It may be, it may not be. Um, and Linda, you are so right. That needle book is going to turn up when I'm looking for something else like a fork in my kitchen <laughs> it's just going to show up in the kitchen some, somewhere uh, let's see do i have that needle book in here please tell me i do goodness i don't I thought it, wait, wait 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 there's another pocket to look in hold on 
Aww, I thought I was gonna have it in here. No, but you know what's funny? Linda, you just said it'll turn up when you're looking for something else. The needle book didn't turn up, but what did turn up is something I was looking for last year. That I was like, where did I put it? My word of the year last year was shine. And I had the word this whole time and I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. <laughs> Here it is in the bag where I put it. Thinking I was being clever. Uh, <laughs> you can't make it up, people. All right. So that little needle book is not in here like I thought it would be. Mm, sad. But I'm also finding uh, they don't remind me that I have these little stickers in my bag. <laughs> in my bag when we get ready to do uh, our little swag bag. They have, there's like a whole heap of these in this pocket. You know, the things you find when you're not looking for them. <laughs> Gotta love it. Okay. All right. So I don't. I don't have that one either. So. I'm just looking I'm like oh we had a whole bunch of okay so I'm digressing I know sorry I got sidetracked squirrel moments all the things so make yourself a needle book have fun doing it um you can put a lot more pages I think that was my sort of mess up with my very first one is I made a needle book and I tried to jam a whole bunch of felt sheets in there like pay i think i had like six or so. like it was crazy it was bulging um but it's the cutest little thing and i wanted y'all to see it because it's not perfect it's wonky and it's lovely so um and then i like to have a good little wrap on mine to keep everything nice and tidy so needle books now i did think i should just make a needle book while i'm on camera today talking about natal charts and numerology and all the things um, and I found this little, so Lisa Shepard Stewart, who is one of our um, teachers at Sacred Makers June, coming up. She was our maker in res um, a couple cycles ago. And she gifted, she gave me a beautiful gift and it was wrapped in this lovely uh, fabric. And this is, um, it's a wax fabric. Let's see, I think it says it on here. Veritable angel wax. But it's fabric -y on one side and wax kind of not a bad kind of wax, but you know, you can you can see it's kind of shiny on one side. So it's a batik because you know batiks you can see the the pattern on both sides, right? Um so I thought, oh, this would make a really I think this would make a really cool uh needle book, right? To turn this piece of fabric that she gave me and she had a gift wrapped in it. Um to turn this into a needle book. So I'm just going to talk and about numerology a little bit here. And we've got about, I've got about, I've got under 10 minutes. No, wait, math, math, please work math. Um, seven, 27 minutes, something like that. <laughs> Don't quote it, but I figure I will, um, just start cutting out my pieces because I thought, am I going to do this as my little needle book or do I want to circle back to my cork and do it as my needle book? Hmm. I wonder. I don't know. All right. Numerology. Let's talk numerology. So numbers. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get my. Where is my. I might have to break the rules and do <laughs> and use my paper thing for my fabric. I don't want any judgment from y'all. Please and thank you. Um, I don't know what I did with my. Oh, shucks. I'm not going to. I'm just listen. I'm going to break all the rules. OK, I'm going to use my paper rotary cutter for fabric. Y'all try to just, you know, don't just hold on to your hearts there. Try not to let it 
make you feel any kind of way. All right, I'm going to, let me cut this out, then I can talk. I feel like I can't talk and cut at the same time. <laughs> I'm also not really trying to do the best job of like getting it straight. I just, first I want to cut it out and then I'll worry about straightness. Just get a smaller piece on here. Just to get a smaller piece to work with so that I don't have to come on. All right, so let's talk. about numerology so numbers are kind of like a universal language right like they don't a one is a one no matter where where you are like it <laughs> but it's they have this universal quality about them and because of that people have spent their lives mapping the symbolism of numbers Okay, um, I want this to be my outside. I want to kind of, I definitely want it to be smaller than this. So I'm going to shave off a little bit here. In fact, I'm going to shave off some top and bottom. So I'm just going to do a few cuts there. So people have spent years, you know, spent their lives mapping out the symbolism behind numbers. But numbers are, like, I believe, even a, a better sort of communication system than words. Because words can have, like, you know, there can be a whole thing with words. That feels big. Okay, okay, go with it, go with it, go with your first instinct, Kyla. Just go with it. Um, but numbers have this beautiful relationship, I think, to the universe. I think the universe speaks to us in numbers sometimes, right? Y'all have heard the term angel numbers. This is how I know this is for paper because it is doing a horrible job of cutting this fabric. Goodness. That was, that was, ugh. <laughs> so the, let me just speak more clearly on the ways I work with numerology. So numerology shows up a lot in my work with tarot because there are 78 cars and they are numbered. And so because of that, we can assign meaning an additional amount of meaning, I should say, to tarot cards, to the archetypes, right? There are a lot of ways that we can, like, for instance, I was talking about the number eight earlier, right? Eight maps to strength. So I can start assigning meaning to that. I think I'm going to go... I'm probably going to cut this down a little bit more. That feels good. Ooh, it did it like the first time on that one. How, what? <laughs> what now? That's pretty awesome. So some people use uh, numerology as a tool for divining. Right? They go, I am going to use numbers to get information or to experience information from the universe. So numerology has this really um, important, and, and numbers are just everywhere, y'all. So you can look at numerology in terms of, now that would be a very little, very little book. I'm doing a lot of folding and creasing of this till I just figure out the size I want. Um, you can look at num numerology from a mathematical standpoint. You can also look at numerology from 
Uh, you can look at number theory. You can look at um, all the ways in which numerology can show up. All right, now that size feels perfect to me. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, oh, I see y'all are writing about the, the book. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, so I'm getting real close to time, y'all. All right, so here's what I'm going to say about numerology. Um, they're really only, the numbers that really truly um, exist are zero through nine. Everything else is a combination of those numbers. And so if you can really zoom in and just understand what zero to nine mean and the symbolism behind that and how they show up, um, that takes you a long way. The whole uh, you can take things like the I Ching and map it to zeros and ones, which then map back to binary code that we use for computers. Like literally right now, the fact that you all are typing to me in the chat is just behind the scenes of that is just zeros and ones. That's all it is. And so numbers are like. Why do I want to say they're like the threads? Um, I don't know if that would be a good analogy, the threads of of the fabric of the universe. <laughs> but math, math, math is like a universal language, right? Like there's some, there's this really interesting idea that everything is just numbers when you break it down, like everything. Um, so if you start to look at numbers in that way and you go, okay, if one represents beginnings, individuality, if it represents um, the solo person, the self. Every time ones show up, you can start to map that onto it. If you go, okay, well, two is one plus one. So now we're talking about balance. We're talking about cooperation. We're talking about, um, and, and what happens when you have two people, patience needs to happen. Like there, there becomes a issue, a, a, a thing around patience. And so you've got patience as a part of number two. Right. Choices. You have two things. Now you have a choice. If I say here, do you want this apple? You either want it or you don't. It's just one apple. But if I go, hey, do you want this Granny Smith or this cosmic apple? You got two things. Now you got a choice. Right. So there's that is, you know, the number two. Number three, um, threes are very much about um, expression, creativity. Um, we're sitting in three energy right now as a collective. Sitting as we do as we do this and have this conversation. Sorry, y'all. I'm still trying to figure out. I was thinking about how these little pieces could this could be my my pages instead of using felt. I know people always use felt, but I'm like, what is, what's something else I could use besides felt if I don't want felt? So I'm gonna play with that. I'm gonna go with looking at. How my pages could be. I'm gonna do them a little shy of the. I'm gonna bring out the the cute scissors. I'm gonna go out there. Try not to cut the fabric. I, I didn't, hope I didn't cut that. Um. So then, if we go, I think I left off on three. If we go four, then we're looking at things like foundation, stability. Think about a table. A table has four legs, um, and the difference between, you know, um, a table with four legs, a table with three legs, right? Like not to say a table with three legs. We have tripods. We have all sorts of things that stand on three legs, but we also know. A sturdier thing is something with four legs, right? So I talked earlier about fives because we got that five of pentacles. So the fives are very much about um, chaos, change, conflict, action. Now, depending on the source, the source you consult, you might find some sources say five is a, a number of spirituality, right? which can also be reflected when we look at the tarot. You've got the five is the Hierophant. And we see spirituality and tradition show up a lot in that card, right? So again, with anything in the sort of woo-woo, esoteric, um, occult-like kind of energy, 
I say find a source you trust and go with what that source is, is saying um, about the thing. So with this fabric, because it's so oh, ridiculously stringy, I almost want to, there's a part of me that wants to take it to my machine and stitch it up, but the machine is not out. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. But I'm thinking if I take these and I fold those in half and I stick them in there. I'm right at 90 minutes, y'all. I'm not going to sew it together. I'm just going to show you what I would do. So, yeah, sometimes, you know, I'm making it from not, not from a pattern. So I'm definitely freestyling here, which I think... Uh, Lisa, who gave me this fabric, um, would approve of. She's teaching a freestyle quilting 101 class at the lake in June. Um, and I feel like she would totally be like, yes, Kyla, do that. Oh, I'm liking this. I think that could work. It feels like I probably need to do something to sturdy this up a little bit which is where like slow stitching comes in. Like I could do some, some slow stitching on this and that'll give it a little bit more of a, cause I also don't want to get rid of my, I want to be able to see that batik coming through. So I was thinking about that, thinking about bringing this little piece that she had it wrapped in and gluing it to the back of this. So it's like a strip and so that it kind of folds and wraps like that. I'm gonna have to think about it y'all. Um, we will call this the first sort of walk through of it but I like I like the size I like how it's feeling I do wish it was just a tad bit sturdier so I'm almost feeling like I could come in with a second piece that's wait is this all I have no oh, I was gonna say I know I have more I could cut out a second piece and stitch them together you know do a little stitching on both stitch them together and shore it up make it a little sturdier so maybe I'll do that I, listen I want to blame y'all. I want to say y'all keep giving me projects to do every time I come <laughs> to these calls. But y'all aren't giving me the projects. I'm giving myself these projects. I know it's not y'all. I'm not blaming. Um, all right, friends. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the rest of the numbers. Uh, where did I leave off? Five. Six is nurturing. Uh, it also comes in when we start talking about domestics and um, sort of like our ideals, sort of things that we hold um, near and dear to us kind of come in the six. The six in tarot is the lover's card. So there's also that energy that shows up around um, sixes. And also it's a, it's a number of commitments as well. Um, the other thing I, I, I'm jumping, I'm jumping topics here, y'all. <laughs> Just that, you know, yesterday I went on for four hours and I barely had water. I'm like, Kyla, you have to drink water if you're going to be talking for two, two hours to people. OK, so uh, seven spirituality. Mm, introspection. That's another reason why I love that seven. Y'all that I talked about earlier. So the seven, the chariot cher shows up so much for me. Um, also, I think like introspection in in service of like self analysis like getting to know yourself on a deeper level is also really important um oh linda says i could paint the edges so smart now i'm sitting here going do i have pinking shears i have every scissor possible do i not have a pair of pinking shears hmm okay i'll circle back to that linda <laughs> but thank you Thank you. Ah, Rena, thank you. Thank you for naming it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is, she says, that is called the suture stitch. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, sevens, self analysis, spirituality. Yep, yep, yep. Introspection. I said that. Um, eights are power, caught, you know, strength, power, cause and effect. Um, nines, are some people say completion some people say nearing completion i actually like to think if we're going zero to nine 
nine is completion. 10 is one and zero put together. It's not it's it's not its own separate number down the, like it's nine ends the zero to nine. Those are the those are the numbers. Everything else after nine is a combination of something that's in that zero to nine. So 10. I know we like to think of it as perfection, completion, blah, 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 but it's actually one and zero coming together. So very different. Yeah. All right. OK, friends, I'm like a, not even not a, quite a minute over, but those are uh, just some highlights. But here's what I want to say. I work with numerology in a lot of different ways. The biggest ways is numbers are energy. What is the energy of the number? And when I start to look at numbers as frequency, that when I start mapping the fact that numbers have a frequency, that is when I can really start taking numerology to a whole other level, you know? And so I bring it back to tarot, to things like looking at your life path number, looking at your soul and personality number. I gave you all some links in the in the description of this of this live stream to check out, to, to find things like your soul number, your personality number, your life path number. Uh, there's things where you can type your name in and see what, what is the frequency, the numerological frequency of your name, right? When I said earlier, my name is a seven, right? So numbers have frequency. Now, for some people, you might be like, Kyla, I don't have time for that. That doesn't make no sense. I'm not doing that. I don't care about numbers. They're not that big of a deal in my world, my life, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. I think that it's just another layer to the mystery of this universe we live in, right? When you start looking at sacred geometry and looking how looking at how numbers like map, when you start looking at 360 degrees, and I didn't say that about the astrological chart, but this is 360 degrees. If we take that and divide it by 12, we get these equally spaced little wedges right if we start taking that and breaking those down to degrees 10 degrees inside of each of these little right like there is a number shows numbers show us the patterns of the universe right in front of us and then when you start looking at things like sacred geometry and breaking things down like the tree of life mandalas and the um we start looking at the golden ratio and you start looking at things like um the Fibonacci sequence and like numbers are magical. Numbers are magical. So that's why I get like so intrigued. Math, eh, I mean, I, uh, but if you, when you start talking numbers esoteric and woo, I'm like, okay, now I can do some math. What did you say? You got a seven and a three. Oh, that's a 10. That's a one and a zero. Oh yeah. Let's look at the energy of that. Right. <laughs> like I, now I yes now I want to sit and do math with you <laughs> so all right friends I could go on and on and on but I'm gonna I'm gonna stop now I'm gonna bring it to a close I'm gonna say thank you so much for being here to talk needle books numerology and natal charts with me um, I do hope that you will give yourself uh, the gift of just staying open staying open to all the things and asking stay curious and ask a lot of what if what if what if knowing my astrology helps me be a better version of myself what if understanding the frequency of numbers and the energetics of numbers helps me raise my vibration what if having a needle book helps me keep all my needles where they're supposed to be <laughs> all right i'm being silly i love y'all have a beautiful rest of your Sunday. I'll be back here tomorrow. I don't know what time yet. I suspect it's going to be somewhere middle of the day. Um, but I will put it in the, uh, I'll try to schedule it before I go to bed tonight so you can see it. And I'm actually going to try to schedule uh, at least out to Thursday of this week. So thank you all for, for showing up, for hanging out with me, for typing in the chat. Let me know you're there. You're listening. You are engaged engaged uh, with what I'm saying. I really appreciate it. It makes a world of difference. So y'all have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your, of your night. Bye. Take care. <laughs> ah, Damon, you're funny. Damon says, in is for now, answering the question, when can we eat? <laughs> All right. Bye y'all. Oh. Hmm.